The Friendship War. Chapter 14. Havesies. It's Saturday afternoon, and I'm going on a button hunt with Hank. Dad likes Hank. They're both into numbers. And also materials. The science of what stuff is made of. My dad has been a Hank fan ever since that day in fourth grade when he started talking about how a strand of spider silk is five times stronger than a strand of steel. That's the same thickness. And that Kevlar is stronger than either of them. My dad knew that already, but still he was impressed. Then Hank began talking about the specific gravity of the three different materials and the way their molecules link up. And when Hank told him how some butterfly wings get their strength and flexibility from these weird structures called geroids, that sealed the deal. Hank and Dad became science buddies. Today's adventure with Hank got started yesterday at lunch. When that girl Sarah and three other kids were lined up to see if I wanted to trade any of my fancy buttons. I told Hank how I was looking to get some larger buttons and that they didn't have to be special like the pinwheel, just big and sort of interesting. So Hank became my button trading advisor. I left the cafeteria with four more large buttons, three made of celluloid, and a dark green beauty with carvings on it made of fake light because of Hank. I only had to trade away five of my smaller specialty buttons. Out in the hallway, just before I headed for math and Hank went toward the gym, he said, I've got an idea about where we might find some good buttons to collect or to trade, whichever interested. My favorite thing about what Hank said, he used the word we, only of the friendliest words. Of course I was interested, and Hank told me his idea and I liked it. And that's why I'm climbing into the back seat of his mom's car. Hi Hank. Hi Mrs. Powell. Hi Grace. I don't think I've seen you since the open house at school last October. You've gotten taller. I never know how to answer when grown-ups say stuff like that. Hank looks sideways at his mom. Kind of an obvious thing to say, Mom. It's been almost a year. Grace wouldn't be shrinking, would she? Just making friendly conversation, Henry. It's Hank. Mrs. Powell backs the car out of our driveway, and as she starts forward, her eyes find me in the rearview mirror. Hank says that you're the one who started this button bat at school, and he told us about the other things you found at that old textile mill in Maine. It was in Massachusetts, Mom. Sorry, Massachusetts. Did you ever imagine kids would get so interested in buttons? Because some people find them absolutely fascinating. Very funny, Mom. Hank turns so he can see me from the front seat. So you brought some money? $15, how about you? About the same. That ought to be enough, except there's no guarantee that we find any buttons for sale. I hunted around online for places that run estate sales for families, which is how I found the three shops we're going to try first. Mrs. Powell takes a quick look at Hank. Three shops? I thought we were going to one store in Sheridan Grove which is already a 20 minute drive, practically in Wisconsin. Why don't we just go to a nice antique shop, maybe in Clifton Woods? Because the people who run antique shops charge half pr high prices. We're looking for a bargain, so we're going to thrift shops. And Sheridan Grove is nowhere near Wisconsin. The drive is more like 40 minutes and Mrs. Powell is not happy especially when we arrive at the address Hank gave her. Carrie's Thrift Barn. This place looks pretty run down. It'll be fine. 
Mom. Come on, Grace. Let's go. And he opens the car door. Wait, you are not going in there by yourselves. Fine, but let us go first. And when we come in, keep away from us, okay? The look on her face. Her feelings are hurt. And right away, Hank says, sorry, that sounded bad. All I mean is you look like you've got plenty of money because you do. And people who look that way don't get bargains at places like this. She stares at Hank. How do you know things like that? Research. I've been to tons of garage sales with my mom, but this is my first time ever inside a thrift store. It's a big place with a low ceiling and there are three or four women, some alone and some with kids, walking up and down the long aisles, picking things off racks, putting them back, and sometimes holding shirts or coats or dresses up against their kids to see what might fit. I spot a couple of guys too. A lot of the clothes are really nice. Even Ellie would like some of the tops and skirts I look at. And then it strikes me. Some of these might have actually been Ellie's before she got tired of them and jetted over to London or Paris for all new ones. But that's a mean thought. And I shove it away. Ellie is not going to poison my Saturday. The front door chimes and Hank's mom walks in and starts wandering around trying to avoid us. Hank was right. His mom does not look like the other shoppers here. Over there, Hank says, and he points at a hand-lettered sign hanging on a string from the ceiling. Estate sales, new arrivals. The stuff below the sign is mostly still in cardboard moving boxes, and a lot of them have been written on with markers, labels like family room, downstairs bedroom, and basement. The boxes are spread around on the floor and the flaps open and the contents jumble. I know that I'm looking at leftovers from the lives of other people, other families, and I can't help feeling a little sad. Not Hank, his mind is like a laser beam. You check through that bunch over there and I'll start right here with this group, okay? Got it. Kitchen utensils, board games, puzzles, toys, clothes, plates, and bowls and glasses, purses, hand tools, shoes and boots, sheets and towels, so much stuff, and looking for buttons feels like hunting for a quarter on a soccer field, which is something I've done before, unsuccessfully. But I begin to see a pattern. See the way this house was organized? There were two bathrooms, probably one upstairs and one downstairs because there are two boxes of bathroomy stuff. And there was definitely a family room because four boxes had that label. Duh. And I keep trying to think if this were my house and I had some sewing stuff, where would I keep it? And as I'm thinking this, out in the middle of eight or ten boxes, I spot a flap with the label downstairs hall closet. I have to kind of wade out to it, trying not to step inside any boxes. And once I'm there, I know I'm getting warmer. The downstairs hall closet was definitely the catch-all at this house, the place to stick whatever doesn't quite belong anywhere else. At our house, there's a drawer in the kitchen like that, and also the utility closet in the laundry room, plus half the basement. There are actually three boxes of stuff from the same closet. And in the second one, I find a basket, and it's the sewing stuff. But it's not a big basket, only about six inches across and four inches deep. And down on the bottom, I see some buttons, maybe 20, mostly small and mostly white. Dead end. There are several bundles of folded fabric in the box, and some of the cloth is so old that it's sort of yellowed, almost brittle. But I spot a deep blue fabric with yellow ducks printed on it and when I lift it out to get a better look underneath if there's a large round cookie tin with a snowy winter scene on the lid and written on the top with a green marker one word buttons after an hour later we're back at Hank's house in the basement playroom with at least two thousand buttons spread across a ping pong table. We only went 
to that one thrift shop after all, which made his mom happy. And for now, we've got plenty of new buttons to mess with. Hank says, first, I think we should sort them all by what they're made of, okay? Sure, that makes sense. I can tell Hank really wants to be in charge of the sorting process, which is fine by me. He sticks pieces of masking tape at different places on the table and then starts writing on each one with a Sharpie. Okay, so cellulite buttons go here. Then Bakelite, Lucite, Vegetable Ivory, China. Vegetable Ivory, what's that? It's an ivory substitute made from the nut of the Tang palm tree, which grows in the tropics. Oh, and Lucite? That's a kind of clear, hard plastic. Yeah, so china glass, mother of pearl, leather, bone, and wood. You don't mean like actual bone. Yeah, sometimes antlers were used, but mostly cow bones. He scans the whole batch of buttons and reaches out and picks one up. Wow, I didn't think we'd have any of these, but check it out. This is bone. He's got a button about the size of a dime on his palm, sort of a pale yellowish color. And there are two large holes, like the eyes on a happy face. This was probably made by hand, maybe as far back as 1850. See how the holes are uneven? That's how you can tell that this one wasn't made on a machine. And if you looked at it through a strong magnifying lens, you could see the lines in the bone where the blood used to flow, not smooth like plastic. That kind of grosses me out. But the science is interesting. Buttons made of cow bones? Who knew? Hank Powell, that's who. The sorting goes pretty fast. Once I learned what to look for, and Hank's a good teacher, in no time at all, I can tell the difference between vegetable ivory and bakelite, with my eyes shut almost. Also, when Hank doesn't know something, he doesn't pretend he does. And I like that. As we sort... He keeps stopping to search on the internet to be sure he's not messing up. After the sorting comes the dividing. Hank says, so do you want to pick first or should I? I can tell he's nervous about this part. Our deal from the start was simple. Whatever we find, we go halvesies. So I smile and say, you should go first. Because I've already decided that Hank can have whichever buttons he wants. He's the one who's getting into collecting them, plus... He thought up this whole plan, and it's not like I need any more buttons after all, ever. We take turns choosing from each group, one material after the other. I pick just enough of the nicer buttons of each kind so that Hank doesn't feel like I don't care, because I know he wouldn't like that. Seeing his face get all lit up about a button, it's great. And it's sweet, too, because he tries to make me take some of the ones that I can tell he's dying to keep. Are you sure you don't want this burgundy and ivory octagon? I mean, it's a classic two-tone bake light. And look at the carvings and the edges. They're so crisp. Thanks, but I like the lighter colors. So sweet. An alarm bell goes off in my head. Because sweet is a word I don't use much. And I just used it twice in the past 30 seconds. So I take a careful look at Hank as he's trying to decide which mother of pearl buttons to choose first. I like what I see. I do. He's cute in a tallish, thinnish, awkwardish sort of way. Dark hair and eyes, straight nose, a mouth that smiles a lot. It's all nice, but mostly Hank looks smart, and that's mainly in his eyes and the way he's always got a question there. I think he likes the way I look, too. But I know that's not the reason why we're friends. We go back and forth dividing up the pearly buttons and then the glass, the china, the leather, the celluloid, and the bone. There are only five of the bone buttons and I make Hank take them all for his collection. And then he says I should get to keep the old container the buttons came in because I'm the one who found it. Havsies. After we're done, my mom comes and picks me up. I'm riding home with a cookie tin of buttons on my lap. I think about the afternoon. I also think about Ellie. On a regular Saturday during the school year, 
we'd have spent at least a couple hours with, I'd have spent at least a couple hours with her. She'd have called and said something like, I'm going to go get some shoes. Want to come? Or I feel like seeing that new movie. Want to come? Because time with Ellie is mostly me tagging along while she does whatever she wants to do. Still, I sort of miss that. But today was good. It was me, Hank, and a bunch of buttons, three different elements mixed together. When elements combine, they don't actually change, but they sometimes link up and form a new compound, the way hydrogen and oxygen join to make water. That's how this feels. And if I had to describe this new compound, it's 99% fun and 1% sweet.